Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Leslie Richardson, and I'm joined by Jason Kloss from the Visual Studio team. Hey, Jason. Hey. How are you doing? Good, good. Very excited. I got some super cool stuff to show you guys, and it's going to be all towards Visual Studio 2026, upgrading, fearless upgrades, um, making sure that you guys are on the latest version, and happy smoothing. Great. I'm excited. So... What do you have to show us? I think it's all about really the getting started process, right? Because 2026 comes with some stuff. Pretty, pretty much. Um, when you install Visual Studio 2026 from like any area, and I can just start sharing my screen. Um, so I have two instances of Visual Studio on here. One 2022 internal preview and then one just like a specific branch. Um, basically, if you go into the available tab, you can go through our blog links, you can go through bootstrappers, whatever. Um, when you install, you'll get this new screen, which basically allows you to easily copy your previous workloads and components from any instance that you have on your box. Um, you can include out of support components, you can um, carry for your extensions, you can also import and export a config, which is super easy. Basically, on any of these installs, you can just export a config right here. But like I said, th that would be better for like a new machine. So if you're on a new machine um, or moving to a new machine, you can export this config. Um, that'll be just put it anywhere. And then you can install. And again, you'll you'll get this screen every single time. Then from this oh, yeah. screen, you pretty much just, um, or you can start from scratch too. But um, you just hit next. And then all your previous components, anything that's carried in the Visual Studio 2026 installer, will be carried right forward. Um, and you'll have, again, like I said, all your tool sets, your SDKs. Um, it'll even tell you which things are not available. So you can go and try to fix your project based on that. Um, in this case, I don't need any of these things. Um, so that's no problem. Uh, and then you're just right into the, the classic view, right? Um, and you've all seen this before. You can edit your components anywhere. If you want to get rid of some old things, let's get rid of the framework for a framework for don't need that. Um, I can check out my extensions. Um, I'll get rid of yeah, this. Highlighting the extensions real quick, uh, just for people who don't know, 2026, most of your 2022 extensions should just work, which is exciting. So Yeah, so those are all ported over, which like we've never done before. That's a really big new thing. Extension packs, mm -hmm. extensions, all carry forward. Those are all compatible in your config file. So again, like if you import those, you can pair those with your VS settings file, and then you, your dev environment should be essentially perfectly recreated in VS 126 compared to what it was in VS 2022. So yep. um, easy. And then you click install, and you're you're pretty much happy swimming, good to go. I like it. Pretty straightforward. Sweet. I like the new interface. So that's the dev box. I also wanted to show you, um, and these are like import instructions and things of that nature. Now I can hop back onto my display, and here's my installer. So again, um, so I have a bunch of installs here. If you go to the available tab, you'll be able to install just for um, ease sake. I already have insiders on my machine. Um, so now, like imagine you just installed Visual Studio 2026. You're super excited, obviously. Um, and you, you want to start opening some of your old projects. Um, this is going to be another kind of seamless upgrade experience where you, if you open up, um, I have this C++ project here. Mm -hmm. So you can edit these projects. Uh, so this is basically where you have all your um, tool sets, right? So right now this one's targeting 141. This one's targeting 143. Um, and I want to get, I want to modernize these projects, right? Like I want to get them um, either on to the next version or I want to go get those specific tool sets that I don't already have on my machine. So what you can do is basically go to project retarget solution or you can right click and retarget solution. Uh, and it'll give you this new UI. So this is what we've been um, trying to improve for you guys. So you have all your project listed here, the tendencies that they need. You can either ignore, you can retarget, you can install. Um, and then if you have multiple projects, you can just retarget them all. Like I just want to use all of them on the latest so I can just move everything to 145. Or I can you know, install the missing ones. In this case, I already have this one installed, so that's not an option. Um, and then this one, I have all three options to ignore um, or install. So, you know, you can execute all three of them. So the Windows SDK, I'll be retargeting to latest. The If you want to do any of this stuff, you can install this one. 
Um, and then you can ignore that uh, slightly older project because I'm happy with that one being on 1.4.3. So before that window existed, what did you have to do to retarget? You just had to like manually update your project files and, or your csproj files or go up oh, in like the so command so line? There was like a bunch of different pop-ups. Like it wasn't really simplified, if I'm being honest. There was gold bars. Then you would have to leave for like specific workloads like I'll show you .NET next, but .NET, like you would have to go into like their browser and like track down what the specific .NET SDK was if you're using a pin global JSON. Um, so it just made it a little bit more difficult where now like hopefully everything is in one place. So you see, I just retargeted the Windows SDK. So now that's gone. Um, and now I'll go install this 141 because I don't have that. And the installer opens. Um, it's really like, very minimal brain power on my side <laughs> and I can just click the install and I can go get that uh, old uh, tool set if I need. Otherwise, I can just retarget, which in this case, I'll just retarget and apply. Done. That is the C++ experience. And then I can jump back in and I can open up the .NET one that we were just talking about. So in this project, I'm using pin global.json for 8L, um, let's say, for example. And I want to, again, just go through the same actions, retarget this project solution. I don't have that on my box, so it'll go and get that installed for me. And this is just a super simple click, and it opens in my browser, and it starts installing that specific SDK. Otherwise, you can just go into your properties and um, retarget your project, or you can just update your uh, global.json to .NET 10 coming out soon. That's both of the IPA sides of the project. So walk through, you basically get Visual Studio 2026, you install it, your environment is basically fully copied for you. You have all your settings, your extensions, your components, your tool sets, your SDKs. Um, and then if we didn't give anything in the installer, you'll open your project and you'll be able to acquire the rest of those tool sets very easily or you can just retarget uh, and start using the latest stuff. Looks good. I, I like how straightforward that is. <laughs> so, I mean, which is always good when you're having to do anything migration or targeting related, I think. Yeah, that that's, we don't want to have a lot of time here, right? Like we want to just like get back into coding. We don't want to be spending time on setup or, or things like that. Yeah, just jump right back into the code as soon as you can. There's also one more thing I want to show for uh, the .NET users. This new modernization tool is super, super cool. So this is a little bit more of a complex project that I have open. And I recently just went through the modernization agent. So like super quickly to show what this looked like in Copilot chat. I just said, upgrade this project to .NET 10. It's currently all targeting .NET 8 stuff. Um, well, now I went through the update. And it comes up with this cool little plan for you. So it'll walk you through all the steps. It executes this plan and it'll show you hey, we're going to be updating all these files. We're going to be moving them from 8 to 9.5 and 10 where it's available. This is the steps that we're going to be following. We'll make all the commits for you. Project properties will be updated. We're going to update all these files and things of that nature. Uh, and then you'll be cool. on .NET 10 and it'll basically tell you like what errors you have to fix manually. So this is the modernization or the .NET modernization agent, right? Yeah, and I just all ran this through, all through GitHub Copilot. I haven't wrote a single line of code, and I just typed in upgrade my project, and it updated all these files. Let me check out my changes. So it has a bunch of updates that I ran through. So this did take like 20 minutes to run through full end to end, but then after I executed everything, I think I pushed the changes already, and I don't think I can bring back up so yeah, these were some of the changes that I made um, and you can just see the diffs. So I went through all my files from the upgrade plan, which I just showed you, and it upgraded all these files. So you're moving from .NET 8 to .NET 10, you get your service defaults. This is an Aspire app, by the way. So everything's kind of like with your service defaults and your app host. And then it just starts moving all of these files to be compatible with .NET 10. It fixed some methods for me, restructured some things. Again, updating all these files for me, doing fixing formatting issues as well. Thank you. I didn't realize that was a problem. Yeah, so I did about, I don't know, what is this? 10, 15 commits here against all these different files. 
I did run into some issues on the orders one. Um, so I guess that one was a little bit more complex. That might have just because it was the RC version. Uh, I just typed in the code bio to fix my errors, and it was it was happy swimming after that. This is good to see. I I've spent a lot of time in the past just trying to get the versioning right whenever I'm trying to update, and that's so unproductive. So any opportunity to give it <laughs> something like that to Copilot to go and fix uh, is great. I will uh, my follow-up question to this is since you ported something uh, that was targeting .NET 9 and moving it to .NET 10, what happens if you have an older target? Uh, like I've talked to a lot of customers who are still using like .NET framework. Does the migration agent still work to some mm, degree? with That's a good question. Let me see what they got in their wiki here. I did, this is the first time I was playing with it, um, but it does look like they include the framework as well. Oh, yeah, it does say modernize your .NET app, especially when yeah, upgrading your .NET. Yeah, so I think it, I think it works mm -hmm. for all the framework stuff. And this is just another wiki page that kind of walks you through. And I was just playing with this yesterday, um, and it was really straightforward. I was actually impressed by how easy it was to just basically feed it on to Copilot. Yeah, and if you follow the release notes, which, y'all, you totally should, um, updated all the time i've noticed some additions happening with the modernization agent quite a bit so like things that might not be there this week who knows might be there in a month and even the stuff that you have to do manually at the very least it's still shaving off a ton of time that i think a lot of people spend when just trying to do the basic modernization migration tasks so this stuff is moving so fast nowadays um, oh, this is the error that I got earlier. This is like a new security advisory. So like I didn't even run into any errors when actually doing the, the upgrade. It was literally because of this new um, security advisory thing. Like they need to have specific orientation or something like that. But but yeah, this is what I'm saying. So the migration agent just did all this for me or the modernization agent just did all this for me. So that was super cool. I like that a lot. I think the general theme here is just how much simpler it is to take your projects and take your extensions, your workflows, all that stuff that you got in VS 2022 over with you in 2026. Because I feel like sometimes there's understandable hesitation when going to the latest Visual Studio bits, in part because the extensions that they want aren't there yet, or the settings and things don't carry over. So they're going to have to do a lot of redundant work to set them all again yeah, right. to remember you're just what settings they had your project so, or your environment that you're not getting all that a lot of value for so yeah hopefully this is easier and like you said you you get to building faster and you don't have to spend a lot of time creating that uh that new that previous dev environment and you're just envious 2026 it's like our most performant version of visual studio we've ever created so i've been loving it I've been moving way faster on my apps than previously. So, um, yeah, we're also going to be shipping a lot faster. If you haven't seen that news, um, we're going to yeah. be shipping on a monthly cadence. So, stable channel, you're going to be getting fixes and improvements, like, like Leslie said, like a lot faster. Um, so, it's not there this month, might be there next. Um, and then Insiders, uh, Visual Studio Insiders, which was previously preview, is even going to be moving faster. So, that is like, uh, multiple times a month that you'll be getting updates getting things a lot lot faster nowadays really excited i'm excited too so if y'all are excited go try out vs 2026 if you haven't already insiders is available ga who knows at the time of this recording could be coming soon could already be here i i can tell you wink wink <laughs> but um yeah go try it out share your feedback of course on the developer community and jason thanks so much for being on the on the show yeah, no problem. And thanks for watching, everybody. So happy coding. Mm -hmm.